Welcome, welcome everyone to Meditation Talk. Thank you for being here. And uh, yeah, nice to see you guys. I'm going to talk a little bit about grace. Uh, and I had an experience this week where I was talking with a client and she had an experience that was not grace. So I'm going to start the talk with not grace, what not grace looks like in our lives. And uh, she had a situation with a relative that where she said some things and their relative got upset and she left. Like it was like a really uh, intense situation for them. Um, and they really like left in a very uncomfortable, they were left in a very uncomfortable place. And I'm going to assert that that is not grace. Right? That is not a place of grace, not a place of uh, comfort. It's not a place of smoothness or uh, flow that that person experienced in that, in that situation. Uh, and I, we, we were talking about it and discussing, discussing it. And it occurred to me that her experience with her, with her uh, relative was like uh, being in a self-defense situation because she really felt like she had to defend herself in that situation, not physically, but emotionally. And Sifu is always talking about the different ways we can defend ourselves when we're in our martial arts classes, right? So the very base level of defending ourselves is like poking people in the eyes, kneeing somebody in the groin, and it's a very like harsh way of, of dealing with someone. Um, and when we were, when I was talking with my client, it's like that's what it felt like for her. It's like that she felt like she'd like essentially uh, verbally poke them in the eyes and <laughs> knee them in the groin, so that they were really upset and she was really upset. It didn't feel good good for her. Um, and, you know, as we, you know, we talk, see if he talks about the different levels of, of self-defense there, uh, you know, we can block and counter, and that's another level of defense when we're getting out of the way of their strike, but we're still striking them. We're still hurting them in some way. Uh, and then an, a third level of, uh, third level of self-defense really is like looking at, like doing joint locks and throws and things like that where you're taking the situation under control but you're not really hurting the person right and so it, it, we were having this discussion about well what what is that like what does that mean if it's what how do you do that when you're in a, in a conversation with somebody when it's just the verbal aspect of what it is that you're looking at and we were just exploring that question and it occurred to me that that is the most graceful intervention, like where you can take control of the situation. You're not hurting anybody, but you definitely are in a place where you can remain calm, in a place where you can allow flow to occur. Um, and it's really like a, a graceful situation. So. Uh, I, I wanted to explore this idea of grace and what does it mean inside of not, I mean, not just movement, but also, also our, our minds as well. What does grace mean for our minds? And, you know, we've all heard of the stories of Bitman or um, Weshiba, who's the founder of Aikido, uh, you know, other martial arts masters and in, in, in situations where they've got multiple attackers. And they just are like they're the, they're the proverbial empty gi. You know, it's like that they're not even there. They're just like allowing people to go and, you know, they just not, it's, it's like they haven't even been touched. You know, they're just moving out of the way, allowing people to move. And if you watch somebody doing that, it's extremely graceful. The movements are very, very graceful. And I think. In our practices, the, the easiest way to access that for our practices is in, within Tai Chi. It's very slow moving. Everything's very um, fluid. 
everything moves in circles and nothing ever stops. So when you're in that space, you've got you know, a, a precise place where your hand is going. You have a precise place where your foot is going. You have a precise way that your weight shift is moving. And that smooth transition from one posture through to the next posture is very, is very graceful. Um, I, I had a teacher once who said that uh, grace is the absence of the unnecessary. And I think that's very, very true for movement. And so if we can be graceful in our movement, can we be graceful in our minds? And that's the question that I really want to kind of like ask about. I'm going to read a little bit from uh, Zen Flesh, Zen Blow, Zen Bones. It's a really great book. If you haven't read this yet, uh, we do have a copy in the, in the dojo. And this is this collection of, I think it's 101 different stories. This is the 19th, the first principle. When one goes, I should have gotten my glasses. <laughs> when one goes to Obaku Temple in Kyoto, he sees carved over the gate the words, the first principle. The letters are unusually large and those who appreciate calligraphy always admire them as being a masterpiece. They were drawn by Kosen 200 years ago. When the master drew them, he did so on paper from which the workmen made the larger carving in wood. As Kosen sketched the letters, a bold pupil was with him who had made several gallons of ink for the calligraphy and who never failed to criticize his master's work. That is not good, he told Kosen after the first effort. How is that one? Mm, poor, worse than before, pronounced the pupil. Kosen patiently wrote one sheet after another until 84 first principles had accumulated still without the approval of his, of his pupil. Then, when the young man stepped outside for a few moments, Kosen thought, now is my chance to escape his keen eye. And he wrote hurriedly, with a mind free from distraction, the first principle. A masterpiece, pronounced the pupil. So as that section bears, with a mind free from distraction, so if we think about grace being the absence of the unnecessary, if our mind is filled with unnecessary thoughts, can we be graceful? I think not. And it allows that, that if we can allow the extra thoughts to just go, if we can let go of those extra thoughts, I believe that will allow grace to enter into our lives. And what would life be like if in our relationships we were graceful, not just in movement, but also in our thoughts and in our minds? What if the unnecessary thoughts were no longer there? My client thought that speaking with her relatives was, was the equivalent of joint walks. And then the grace would allow her to have a very different outcome of the conversation. And what would that be like in your life as well? And we can say that meditation is practicing being graceful in thought, where grace is the absence of the unnecessary. So I invite you now to sit, very, very short talk, but I invite you now to sit let go of any thoughts that are unnecessary and be in grace. Thank you.